Blessings, everyone. Wanted to come on real quick. And I hope every, everyone is doing well. Happy, what day is this? Oh my gosh, Tuesday. <laughs> Happy Tuesday. God bless you. And um, I pray this word reaches you in um, good spirits and a grateful heart because we have a lot to be thankful for. We have a lot to be grateful for. So, okay, we'll pray real quick and then we'll get started. Father, I thank you for this new day. I thank you for your mercies that are new every morning. We grab hold of those mercies today, Father, because we need them. We thank you, Lord God, for every opportunity that we get to come boldly to the throne to obtain mercy and grace to use in a time of need. And Father, we are definitely in a time of need. I pray you would get the glory out of this video. I pray, Father God, that your word will come across, Father God, and touch the hearts of my brothers and sisters, oh God, and that they would know how much you love them how you love them with an everlasting love so i bless you i thank you and i honor your holy spirit i pray that you will increase completely and i decrease and that you would bring this word forth in jesus name amen okay so yeah i'm starting something new because i was doing lives and yeah, that was a mess. I don't think it was a mess. It was just something different. So I'm going to go back to uploading videos um, unless the Lord says something different. But I think it's fine to just um, post post the video as often as um, he wants me to. So, of course, you know, my, if you don't know, my name is Natasha. I have a ministry called Secure Future, and uh, my mandate is to speak to um, everyone in the um about abortion, about abortion being wrong, about babies, the babies having a voice. I consider myself to be an advocate for the unborn baby where they're not allowed to speak or not given an opportunity to speak on their behalf. Uh, there are myself and others who um, advocate for the unborn baby and we encourage people to keep their babies because their babies are a gift from God and given to them as a gift from God because the Lord wants them to be able to pour into um, raising that baby. Um, there's a lot of uh, stuff going on, you know, with the whole Roe v. Wade. That was a blessing, you know, but a lot of the states now are still deciding that they do want to um, continue on having abortions, but there are a lot of states, I think we're up to like 24, that have completely banned abortions, which is amazing, and that is such a blessing, and we have so much more to go, so much more to go, you know, so that's a, yeah, I would definitely solicit your prayers when you pray, you pray that these states will have the heart of God so that they can, um, ban abortion completely and give the baby, give the unborn baby a chance to come into this world and live out the destiny that God has for them, which is a beautiful destiny. And even the idea of being chosen to be the mommy of these babies is an amazing destiny as well. So, and with everything going on with uh, flip-flopping, you know, with the abortion laws, one minute someone is saying that we're going to um, veto veto it if it becomes a national, a national ban, which it should. Um, another person is saying, you know, we need to protect reproductive rights, okay? And then you got someone else who's saying, abortion is health care, which is not. Health care is when you are um, making, um, taking care of somebody because of an illness or a disease, right? So care given to someone with an illness or a disease. Being pregnant is not a sickness or a disease. So abortion can't possibly be a cure for a sickness or a disease because being pregnant is a gift from God. It's an actual uh, miracle from God because not everyone can become pregnant. So they have a lot of these things that people are saying. And then you have the pharmacies that are 
making um, the abortion pill available. You know, very well-known big chain pharmacies now are buying into this narrative that, you know, making abortions available for people, you know. And then you have these laws that are coming out that are saying, you know, we have to be able to um, support and fund um, abortions, you know, and they're trying to make it where you can get an abortion through Medicaid, which is paid through the, st uh, through the state, I believe, the government. The government actually, sorry, there's something on my lip. So, okay, oops. The government is actually paying Medicaid. So that means we are, who are taxpayers, taxpayers um, are paying for these abortions, which is not right, you know. So there are so many things going on that we actually have to step back and ask ourselves, what, why the big push to kill babies? Well, why? You know, why are we pushing our young ladies? And, you know, and I understand that there are certain situations where people feel like, that's a legitimate reason to have an abortion. And there are no reasons to have an abortion. If you don't want the baby, there are resources where you can adopt out. You know, if you want to keep your baby, there are resources that will help you keep your baby. So it's all a win-win, you know. And so we have to get to a point now where we know the truth and we, we, we walk in the truth, the truth for ourselves and stop allowing the um the news, you know, the fake news. Stop allowing the news to um control our thoughts and direct, you know, how we should live. We should not go by what society is saying. You know, we should not go by what our, our peers are saying because all of these um, outlets are deceiving people and it's making people feel like, you know, the only answer is abortion when that's not the only answer. The answer is actually living holy and pure. That's one. Another option is to not have sex. It's called abstinence. And actually abstinence should be the new sexy. I promise you that that just it needs to be the new sexy because that'll stop a lot of drama. It'll stop a lot of diseases and it'll stop a lot of abortions, you know. So that should be something that uh, we should be um, promoting. Um, abstinence, you know, to stop um, this um, a massive amount of abortions that are still taking place, babies dying, you know, and um, when I was talking to the Lord about this last week, I was like, you know, what do you say? You know, what do you say? Because it's like people are protesting and people are providing resources and there's so many things out there to get to a place where we don't have to have abortions anymore. You know, um, the right to abort is not necessarily if you make the right decision to not even get pregnant, you know, um, for you and for the baby. It's the better choice. So, and this is what the Lord said, you know, I was very touched because his heart is so for the babies. His heart is for his children, period, because he knows what it is to have to do that and then live with that shame or live with that guilt. And he forgives you, you know, if you did have to have an abortion for whatever reason, the Lord forgives you. Once you go to him, the Bible says, um, First John 1 and 9 says, if you confess your sins, he'll forgive your sins and he'll lead you on the right path or on the path of righteousness. So there's really no condemnation, but you have to be able to, you know, confess that, yes, you did kill a baby, you know, and then take the necessary steps to receive deliverance, you know, from when you sacrifice that baby to the demon gods, which is exactly what that is. And I've talked about that in previous um, videos and that when you do abort your baby, what you're doing is you're sacrificing your baby to a, a demon god called Moloch, Moloch. And this is a practice that has been done in the Bible for a long time where women and men would sacrifice their children to um, 
for stuff, power, money, time. And it's the same thing that's going on here. And we we want to stop it. You know, it's not a good thing. It's demonic. And while the society is making you think that it's the way to go, it's not the way to go. So, okay, the Lord said, flee from, flee from deception and run to the truth that will set you free. God is a God of all truth. He is your father who loves and cares about you. You know, the Bible says he cares about everything that concerns you. You know, how you feel, what you need what provisions you need, what protection you need. God cares about everything that is pertaining to you. And he realizes that there is a large amount of deception that is being fed to his children. And he is calling us to flee from the deception, move away from it, you know, run to the truth, the truth that will set you free. The truth that you don't have to abort your baby. The truth that it is possible to live holy and pure. The truth that God is the God of all truth. And that he loves you with an everlasting love. You know, the, the society would want to tell you that God doesn't love you because um, he wouldn't let certain things happen to you. But we live in a society where people are making choices and then the choices are turning into you know having bad consequences thank you holy spirit i was trying to think of what to say so um yeah so that's what the lord is calling us now to flee from deception that's huge you know in galatians 6 and 7 says be not deceived god is not mocked for whatever a man sows is what the man is going to reap. Whatever you put out there, that's what you're going to get back. If you put out death, then that opens up your life to have a life of things dying. You know, you won't have um, financial blessings. You won't have blessings in the things that you're trying to do. You know, those things will promote a life of feeling like things are just dying in your hands, you know. Um, if you so re if you so love, you're gonna reap love. You so abundance, you're gonna you know what I mean. Whatever you put out there, that's what you're gonna get back, and that's what you know. The Lord is telling you, He's not gonna be mocked. He sees everything, you know. He sees everything that's being done, and He's calling for us to stop, you know, stop doing what everybody else is doing and run to what He wants us to do because what He wants us to do is what's gonna bring life to us peace, joy, you know, there's nothing fun about abortion. There's no fun. There's no joy. There's no peace. There's no life. It's nothing but destruction. And who, who promotes destruction? The enemy. You know what I mean? He's the one who wants to see everybody, you know, how I say it, the, the word says, um, the thief, he's the thief, right? And he comes to steal, kill, and destroy, kill. That's the enemy, you know, bring life, Jesus. And Jesus came to bring life and for us to have life and have it more abundantly, you know, and that's what he wants for us. So I'm not going to be on super long because um, it's pretty clear what the Lord said, flee from deception, you know, um, know the truth, want the truth, he's the truth. You know, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. There's no other way. You know, the only answer is Jesus. There's no, you know, no other way, period, Jesus. Okay? So, uh, if you have had an abortion, all you have to do is confess your sins and know that Jesus will con con um, forgive you of your sins because that's why he died on the cross, so that you don't have to live a life of guilt and shame, that you would know that you can lay that on an altar of where he shed his blood and he will forgive you and he will bring you in the right path and then you can, you know, turn away from that lifestyle and run into his arms where you will find the love and the peace and the joy that he has for you. If you are at the crossroads and you are pregnant and you are trying to figure out what to do, keep 
your baby. Don't let anybody tell you that you can't do it. With God, all things are possible, and he's there to help you and will protect you and provide for you and your baby. There are many, many resources out there that you can um that'll help you. You know, they got maternity homes. You got people that will give you everything that you need. And I mean everything. I've seen people give away cribs and pampers. And I mean the biggest of things and the smallest of things. But the Lord has his people out there, you know, willing to help. You know, so if you're at the crossroads, keep your baby, reach out and find these resources that are available to you. I'll include my email address. If you want to reach out to me, I will be more than glad to help you walk you through it. You know, um, that that is my heart, you know, to be able to help women save their babies. Actually, that's God's heart that he gave me. So I love, I love being able to um, speak to his heart, you know, and that he has given me his heart for these babies. And I love, I love, I love what I do, you know. And lastly, you know, we're at a place now in our lives where Jesus is coming back very soon. And a lot of people don't realize that, you know, that's the hour that we're living in, that we don't know when he's coming. But we should have that heart's posture and we should know for sure that if Jesus was to show up in front of you right now and say, I've come for my bride, that you can go. You know, so the best way to do that is be able to receive him as your Lord and Savior. Just say a very simple prayer, Lord Jesus. I know that you are the Son of God and that you came on this earth to die for me. Forgive me of my sins. Come into my life and be my Lord and Savior and fill me with your Holy Spirit. Amen. Once you say that prayer, you are saved and the Lord is your Lord and he will walk with you arm in arm in every situation within, you know in life and um you'll know for sure that you'll have eternal life everlasting life with him you know you won't be on the fence trying to figure out if I die where would I go now you know so get you a bible get you um some friends that love Jesus Go to a Bible-based church if you have one in your area and pray. All you got to do is say, Lord, help me. Lord, hear me. <laughs> Lord, I need something. You know what I mean? He doesn't have to be nothing fancy. You know, he's a God who loves his children and he knows their heart. And once you go to him with a pure heart and know for sure that his way is really what you want, believe me, he'll take you right to it. And what I love about the Lord is you don't have to feel like you're going to be perfect. You don't have to be perfect. I know in a lot of instances, if I take one step, he'll push me 10 steps. You know, if I take another step, he'll push me another 20 steps. And his word actually says that he gives you the will and to do of his good pleasure, which means you don't have to come in feeling like you, you know what to do. You don't have to know anything. All you have to do is say yes to him. And he'll show you and he'll grow you and he'll love on you. And life would be so much sweeter. I'm not saying it's not going to come with some trials because it does come with trials. He had to go through trials, but you can believe he'd be with you every step of the way to get you through everything. Okay. So that was it. I'm so glad I got a chance to do this video. I pray that you have an amazing day today and um, may God bless you. Father, I thank you so much for my brothers and sisters. I thank you, Lord, for adding to the YouTube channel so that your word can get across to many. And um, I just pray that you will continue to bless them, keep them, and protect them. I pray Psalms 91 over each and every one of my subscribers, Father, that you would bless them and bless their families and provide everything that they stand in need of. Protect them and keep them. And I bless them, and I thank you, and I bless you, Father, in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, that's it. So, have a great day. God bless you. Bye.